The third panelist is Luke Swartow. Luke is testifying on behalf of the U.S. Public Interest Research Group. He develops policy, lobbies, and writes on federal student aid issues. He writes on student loan policy and federal higher education policy. Luke has authored several reports on student debt and fed federal aid, including the report entitled Paying Back, Not Giving Back, student debt's negative impact on public service career opportunities. Mr. Swartout received his bachelor's degree from Amherst College. Chairman Hinojosa, uh, other members of the committee, thanks for convening this important discussion today. I'll be speaking on behalf of the U.S. Public Interest Research Group. Uh, U.S. PERG is the national network of state-based, nonpartisan, nonprofit organizations based in 30 states and working with students on over 100 campuses. Over the last decade, our higher education project has worked to represent our hundreds of thousands of students, student members here in Washington, D.C., uh, in urging for increased access to an affordable education. I'm going to briefly summarize my written testimony and focus on two main challenges facing students, uh, primarily issues of need-based financial aid and issues of rising student debt. I expand on these issues and others in my written testimony and be happy to take questions on any of them. Uh, the goal of our financial aid system is to ensure that any student has access to an affordable education regardless of their financial background. Unfortunately, recent studies, including those by the advisory committee, have shown that we're falling short of that goal, that there are hundreds of thousands of students every year who are academically qualified but who don't persist on to college primarily due to financial, financial cost. Uh, rising college costs and stagnant grant aid are having a real impact on college students, uh, whether that's preventing students from going on to college or simply changing the way they progress through college. Uh, we are facing serious challenges. Many students are uh, choosing not to start at a four-year institution, but rather start at a two-year institution and progress along through that process. Other students are choosing to extend the period of how long it takes them to get through college. Uh, and while these may be ways to avoid debt or uh, come up with available funds, it has the overall impact of decreasing graduation, um, graduation rates, which is a reason that we, something we should all be concerned by. Congress has the ability to take a strong step in solving these problems by increasing the maximum Pell Grant award in the FY08 budget. Uh, the maximum Pell Grant award has remained stagnant for, uh, up until this year, it remained stagnant for the last four years uh, and is actually worth less than it was 30 years ago. Last fall, the Secretary of Education's Commission on the Future of Higher Education recommended that the maximum Pell Grant award be funded at 70 percent of the average four-year college tuition. According to the American Council on Education, uh, such an increase would peg the maximum grant at approximately $6,200. The Commission report provides a useful framework to start thinking about where we need to be funding this important grant program. The second major financial challenge that I'd like to address is the issue of rising student debt. As college costs have increased and more of the costs have been pushed onto the backs of students, we've seen more college graduates leaving school with serious amounts of debt. About two-thirds of students graduate with loans, averaging about $19,000. But we've also seen in the last decade a seven-fold increase in the number of students borrowing uh, above $40,000 in loan debt. Uh, recent reports suggest that some students uh, fear the sort of fear of this debt, uh, particularly amongst first-generation uh, students, will dissuade them from pursuing um, uh, persisting on to college. And while more research needs to be done on the issue of access, it's quite clear that debt's having a serious effect on affordability. We released a report last year, uh, the one that the, the chairman referenced, Paying Back, Not Giving Back, that found that 23 percent of public college graduates uh, with loans have too much in debt to manageably repay at a starting teacher salary. Um, furthermore, debt's been found to uh, delay when families start uh, when when uh, graduates start families or are able to make purchases and investments like buying a home. Um, we think that we need to expand and reform the income contingent repayment system. Uh, we're supportive of proposals like Congressman Petri's IDEA proposal and fair payment assurance, which is uh, embedded in Senator Kennedy's Student Debt Relief Act. But beyond simply making debt more manageable, we need to take the steps to um, reduce the increased demand for debt burden, and certainly what I talked about in terms of need-based financial aid will have an impact on that as well. A college education remains an incredibly 
uh, valuable investment and accomplishment for American students, um, uh, whether that's uh, economic or, or intellectual opportunities open to them. It remains, uh, an educated populace remains an incredible investment for our society, uh, critical to uh, our civic and social and economic health. But we do face real challenges. I've chosen to outline two here today, uh, and, and we hope that the committee will look hard at serious reforms in the upcoming uh, Higher Education Act reauthorization discussions to uh, help reduce barriers and ensure access for all students to an affordable education. Thank you.